Hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650 here, and welcome to the one of the last episodes of Season 1 of the New Bike Build Series. And this is where we take a 2017 BMW S1000 RR that I purchased here from Sills BMW and we have transformed this motorcycle into something that I will be proud to ride and race on the filthy streets of Cleveland. Today, we have two episodes left in Season 1 and today we're going to be doing some work <laughs> to the Triumph Daytona 675R that we're also going to be rewarding to some of our amazing Patreon supporters. This thing looks good on your bench, Zach. It does. It is a good looking bike. Mm -hmm. Super light. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so what are we going to do? We got to get the mirrors back on it today. We're going to uh, pop the mirrors the on. Change, right? Oil change, yeah. We'll check the chain and lube it if necessary. Okay. And uh, just get this thing ready for its new owner. Well, let's do that while the door's open. Let's fire it up. Let it warm up a little bit. Sweet. You have to hold the clutch in. Ah. Oh, those are AP7 LED lights. Super bright, aren't they? Yeah. So yeah, Zach is right. That bike has a lot of nice parts on it. Op 7 LED headlights, fender eliminator, competition works, plate, relocator. It's got a working horn. Okay. Fumble around and see what we can get. See the fill is here. Yep. Oh, this must be a dipstick. Yep, that's a good stick. That was a good stick. Let's fill up here. Is that pretty common to have a dipstick for like right there for a 600? Uh, no, not really. Most bikes have a uh, sight glass, uh, uh -huh. clear glass like the BMW does. Um, or the, like, the dipstick's up higher or something, kind of a different spot for it. Okay. Gets the job done though. Yep. Let's see if we can find the drain. Well, that's nice and easy to get to, and then it looks like the oil filter's right behind here. Actually, I probably safety wired that oil filter. I, just I think you did. It. Yeah, <laughs> you, did, you did all this stuff. So we just got to get this lower fairing off. But uh, while we figure that out, I think we'll get the oil draining. Is that sort of like the S1000 position where it kind of... Uh, no, the exhaust really isn't in the way. Mm -hmm. It's kind of facing a different direction. Oh, wow. How's the oil look? Can you tell? It doesn't look too bad. Okay. You can see it's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. It's not super black. Nothing shiny coming out. That's always good. So, 15 bolts and a couple layers later, we right. got the side fairing off. Yeah. Exposing a bunch of other components that we didn't even need to, but now we can get to the oil filter. Uh huh. As you can see, it's wired up there. Then you probably did that, right? I probably did. Old filter off. Old filter off. Just a second here. Looks pretty clean, stayed all together. As you can see, the O ring's not in it, so that means it's stuck to the face of the engine. That's what you want to make sure you always get off of there. Okay. Throw that guy off. Yeah. Well, the oil. We'll get him out of the funnel later. Okay. Grab the new filter. Does a new filter come with its own O-ring? Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Let's see what they got going for us here. You can see it's already in place. It mm -hmm. should be in place. And oh, it comes with a crush washer. Look at that. Nice. Perfect. Uh, I always like using the manufacturer oil filter. I found they just they filter the best. They have the best life, and never you never hear any failures or anything. Gotcha. As you do with some aftermarket ones. So that's what we're gonna do on this bike too. We'll just put the Triumph parts back on it and. Uh, I think it was recommended synthetic oil. So you got uh, some AMS oil, 10W40. That's what we're going to be putting in it. Okay. Lubrication. Pull this fill plug, let it finish draining out, and then uh, snug the oil filter up. So 
So you got the engine face clean. Mm -hmm. It's always good to take a little of the old engine oil and you wipe it to lubricate the filter. Okay. I'm not sure why you use the old engine oil, uh -huh. but I've seen it multiple times in different service manuals. So okay. you want to put something on it so it doesn't stick on the engine forever. Gotcha. And then once it touches the face, you can go a full turn and that's pretty much good for any oil filter, your car, motorcycle, anything. That's a good rule of thumb. Gotcha. Since we have the filter wrench, I'll just give it another little snug to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. If I find where I put that wrench at. Okay, well, Let's give it that final we'll quarter of a turn and good to go. All right, so another taste of roll reversal. I'm about to put some oil into this thing and Zach's going to film. So we think it's going to take at least three quarts, maybe more, right? Yep. I'll start with three quarts then. A full synthetic oil, as we saw earlier. And the good stuff. And I'm going to hold this funnel so that it doesn't move and spill the oil all over the place. That oil looks really clean. Oh, yeah. As well Definitely as cleaner than what came out of there. Mm -hmm. BMW sales, line one. BMW sales, line one. Oh, look at that. Someone answered the phone. You know? <laughs> you know in all of our videos, yeah. it rings and rings and rings. Yeah. Because, like you said, we were closed on Tuesdays. So, what do you guys do in the winter while I'm pour, pouring this oil in here, Zach? Here at Sills BMW. Um, we actually stay fairly busy. Mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of recalls out. We'll try to catch up on them. Mm -hmm. uh, some restoration projects. We'll, we'll open up to older motorcycles. Okay. Uh, we got four wheelers. Mm -hmm. That's pretty big this time of year. It's hunting season coming up on. Yep. Um, do you sometimes prep bikes for like the bike show? And stuff? Yeah, sometimes we have to do that for the IMS shows mm -hmm. uh, around town. BMW will have us build those bikes. And while you're doing that, we'll do a quick check over on some other stuff. Looks like the brake pads are good. Uh, our chain slack. Ooh, we're definitely going to have to double check the chain slack. That looks a little bit out of spec. Okay. See if we can get a good look at these front pads. I can. I'm not sure what the camera's looking at. They look to be in great shape. Yep. Coolant level in the reserve tank's good. So yeah, we'll just have to double check that chain slack. What do you got going on for the oil there? You I get put three quarts in there. All right. Well. Go ahead, pull the dipstick out then. You calling me a dipstick? Yeah. <laughs> okay, wipe it off. With what? The rag right there. Okay. And now uh, place it back in. Okay. And then pull it out? Yep, pull it out. And then hold it level. Okay, so you can see we're way at the bottom. Uh-huh. We, we're going to want to be up that. here before we start it. So gotcha. let's add about another half quart right and see where you wind up. Okay. If you want, grab this exhaust hose that we've been running into all summer long. Yep. Now it comes in handy. Stick that over the pipe. I'll turn the fan on. Start it up. Turn the key on. Yeah, start it up. looked up the owner's manual for the 675 and we were uh, looking up the chain spec so we know what to set that to. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's only a uh, half inch to under an inch or 13 to 32 millimeters so that's actually pretty tight for a chain Yeah. Or compared to the leader bikes that we've been working on. So let's see where we're at. We're going to be way past that. Come down I got 75 there and it goes all the way up to 25, so that's 50 millimeters where we're at right now. So wow. we got to cut that in half pretty much. So wow. to do that, you've seen us do that before. We're just going to loosen up the axle and then uh, move our chain adjusters back. So I've been riding with the super loose chain, eh? Riding with the super loose chain. Have I been losing power, or what's the consequence of doing that? Um, no, nah, I don't think I don't think you lost power or anything. It's just. Uh, it's out of specification. It could wind up rubbing on a frame or something mm -hmm. if it gets too excessive. You might get a, you might have poor transmission uh, operation. It might cause some shifting issues. Sure. 15 millimeters. That wrench doesn't get much use from the stuff I usually work on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Do we, do we need this still? Uh, no. Can you pull that out of the way? Okay. Shut the fan off. No. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Oh, no one got to see that. No. <laughs> Me trying to play basketball with this freaking exhaust hose. Two. We'll try to do two turns on it, and then we'll measure it when we're done to make sure. Okay. So that puts us at about six, and then I can push it to four. So that's about 20 millimeters. It's going to tighten up once we tighten that axle nut. So okay, should be good to go with that. I'm just going to measure real quick to make sure that our axle is as straight as possible. Okay. We got 28.89. Mm -hmm. That needs to match? Yeah, we want to match. 29.8, so not too bad. We'll just move this one out just a little bit more. Okay. Get hopefully the 29. Here and we'll call that straight. Tighten her up. Yep. Snug it up, and then I think we've got the torques back for the axle in here too. Okay. Wow, that is super tight. It is 110 newton meters. Set you up here. Go ahead, get that yeah. pull until it clicks. I don't know if you used that one yet. No. So just tighten it in nice fashion and you'll hear a loud click and then stop. Just use your one hand. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. That's it. I, I noticed this is super tight now, man. Did it tighten up a lot? Yeah. Hey. Yeah, it's still got some free play to it and that's okay. probably all we really need because it isn't much. Six to four, yeah, that's 20. That's 20 millimeters. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but way tighter than what it was. Indeed. Come on over there. There we go. Oh, perfect. Perfect. We're right before that max full. Yep. Okay, we put some cleaner on. We'll wipe off the old grease first. We can also check now it's on the rear stand, make sure we have that same amount of play. See, this actually has a little bit more right there. I see there, that now, so yeah. That means that there's tight spots starting to develop in the chain. They're not that bad yet. Um, that the pins, what happens is when you accelerate, the pins will stretch or they don't stretch in a certain part of the chain. Okay. And that's where you wind up with those. So it's good. Chain cleaner should be doing its thing. We'll just wipe off some of the old stuff. Make sure you keep your hand out of the way of the sprocket. Ooh, yeah. Well, that'll be painful. That would be bad. We still have the uh, wheel weights taped up on here, I see. Black tape. I think that looks pretty decent. That's oh, yeah. for track use. The person can remove those if they want to. Probably a silver wheel weight under there anyway. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got a fit chain lube with Molly. Nice. Just coat the back. Get both sides. And get the pins here. This one's nice, it's got the gold master link, so it's that. easy to tell where you started at. Yeah, it only took me 30 minutes. <laughs> okay. Probably go just a little bit more. Make it snuggers. It's a mechanical type lock nut, okay. so it's going to lock itself in place. Okay. So as long as it's just snug, it's not going anywhere. Gotcha. It's you almost see anywhere. the little metal pieces that lock it in place. 
Here we go. Snug. There you go, snug. Now I'm gonna do this with my freaking fingers, but I can't. Just as far as you can. Yeah. Save some time. So Zach's gonna take your Triumph 675R for his uh, test ride to make sure everything is okay, but we know it is. The bike has less than 3,000 miles on it. It's a pretty chilly day here in Filthy Cleveland, only 50 degrees. Look at those Op 7 LED bulbs. <laughs> Zach likes back bikes like that, believe me. 50 degrees! Well, there he goes. Well, Zach is having fun riding that Triumph Daytona 675R on this chilly November day in filthy Cleveland. So, uh, I'm pretty sure he enjoyed that bike a lot. How was it? Alright. Yeah? Good job on the oil change. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. No leaks? No leaks. No nothing. No check. That's why we take them for a ride. Mm -hmm. And uh, one other final adjustment I want to show, just because it gets overlooked a lot, is the uh, throttle free play. Okay. It's, it kind of has a lot. You can see before it actually starts to engage the throttle. Yeah. You have all this. So all you need to do on most bikes, some of them are right here. Mm -hmm. You pull back and you adjust here. This bike, it looks like it is right up here in this one rubber piece. So then we want to lengthen the cable, okay. so we're going to make the gap between there and there bigger. Gotcha. Don't want to go too crazy, just small adjustment at first. That feels pretty good. Yeah. There's nowhere near as much slop. Mm -hmm. Back. And then you just want, want to snug the lock nut against your adjuster nut so that it can't come out of adjustment on its own. Put our rubber covers back in place. And then, like I said, we'll start it up. Uh, throttle, I mean, uh, cut. Didn't hear the idle RPM no. change at all. So that means it's not too tight, but it got rid of all the slop before. It just makes it easier to ride. Hell oh, yeah. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. Yup. We'll catch you next time. Yup, catch you next time. All right. So that was Zach wrapping up. The Triumph Daytona 675R. I love this bike. In my one year of ownership, I installed the Arrow full titanium exhaust. As you can see, it's changed magnificent rainbow array of colors. And it's got these awesome Bridgestone RS10 tires on it. Still relatively new. I think these tires have about 300 miles on them. And uh, this bike is ready to get sent off to its new home as is your 2017 S1000RR that we've wrapped up. This is also an outstanding motorcycle. We've got the uh, ram mount in there so folks can attach their GPS or their GoPros or whatever they might want to put on there. So that is it. Just one video remaining in the first season of the new bike build series and then we're going to wrap it up. Our last video is going to feature me detailing both these bikes and showing you all the products I use to clean my bikes and keep them nice and neat. And then we're going to have a brief conversation with Zach, go a little bit into his history as a mechanic and his certifications and things like that. And that's going to wrap up the new bike build series. And after that, we're going to hit the road and deliver these bikes to their new homes. So if you like the video, hit the like button. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking subscribe. New videos are always uploaded to my channel. Stay tuned for more. And as always, thanks for viewing. We'll catch you next time from Sills BMW and the new bike build series.